here. But I'm also Aaron Jr. But I'm the first Aaron Jr. So you know what that makes you? The second Aaron Jr. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the E. Rogers SCA School of Black History Program. We have an amazing experience in store for you guys. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Aurelia Walker and I'll be doing my presentation on Mervyn Warren. Mervyn, Mervyn Edwin Warren is an American film composer, record producer, and a music conductor and music arranger. Mervyn Warren's mother taught him how to read at the age of three. He made a change by performing for people and making a talk show called The Mervyn Talks. It made six Grammy wins. He also worked with Whitney Houston. Mervyn Warren was born in Huntsville, Alabama on February the 29th, 1964. Mervyn Warren is currently 57 years old. His parents are Mr. and Mrs. Barbara J. Warren and Mervyn A. Warren. Mervyn was named after his father. I am Aurelia Walker and my presentation was uh, Marvin Warren. Thank you for, thank you and goodbye. Hi, my name is Aaron Younger and today I'll be doing a presentation on Dr. T.R.M. Howard. Who is he? Theodore Rose Roosevelt Mason Howard was born in March 4, 1908 in Murray, Kentucky and died in May 1, 1976. He got degrees from Oakwood Union and Lomas Linda. He was very committed to civil rights and he mentored Rosa Parks. He even facil facilitated the Emmett Till defense. Did he have any family? T.R.M. Howard did have a wife and her name was Helen Nella Boyd. They were, they were married for 41 years. They had adopted one child named Barrett Howard. T.R.M. Howard had three siblings, David and Linda Bieto. He had one sister-in-law named Edith Boyd. What did he do? Dr. T.R.M. Howard was a wealthy doctor, entrepreneur, and civil rights activist. He was a surgeon and a fraternal or organization leader. To finish things off, he was a civil rights activist and a pretty wealthy one at that too. Hello, my name is Aaron Taylor. I am in the fifth grade and my presentation is on Dr. Walter Person. Walter Person was, 
on November 18th of 1945 is academic scholarships. In the state of Pennsylvania, Walter Person graduated at Palm Forge Academy, then earned a degree, a degree in Ridgeland and Theology from Oakwood College in Huntsville. Walter Person was married to a woman, her name was Helen Sinder. Walter also ha had children. Their names were Frederick, Beverly, and Beatrice Person. Sadly, Dr. Dr. Walter Pearson died June 7th of 2020. And here is the ending video of the life and ministry of Elder Dr. Walter Pearson. What I pray for is not an epiphany. I pray for a theophany. <laughs> Because I believe that on an ordinary day, on my ordinary knees, on my ordinary carpet, I can pray an extraordinary prayer to an almighty God. And what I see in that place will not be just an epiphany. It will be a theophany. For God himself will place power in the place that I pray. And I will find in power. I am Harmony Whitney and I'm doing a project on Dr. Ava Beatrice Dykes. Who was she? Dr. Ava Beatrice Dykes was a beautiful college student that graduated from Oakwood University. She became one of the first five African-American women to do the required course to get a PhD. The third to the third woman to an advanced degree in the U.S. and the third woman to receive a doctoral degree in the U.S. She went to Ephesus Church when she was young. P. Gustavus Rogers made a big difference to her when she was young. She was an Adventist. She was a Seventh-day Adventist. She was born in Washington, D.C. in 1893 on August 13th and she died on October 28th, 1986 in Huntsville, Alabama. I am Harmony Whitney and my person was Dr. Beatrice Dykes. Dr. Eva B. Dykes received her BA degree from Howard University and her MA and PhD degrees from Radcliffe University. Prior to her joining the faculty of Oakwood College, she served as a member of the faculty at Howard University. In 1946, Dr. Dykes organized the Aeolians. The Eva B. Dykes Library is named in her honor. Hello everyone, my name is Jeremiah and I'm in the fifth grade and I'm gonna be doing Ronald Brzee. Ronald Brzee was born June 12, 1974. Child vision education. Born to Roland Brzee, his father was a pastor at the Seventh Day Church, the Seventh Day Church. Miami Union Academy, student government, on to society, Florida young leaders in Washington, D.C., co-captain of the basketball team, degree, graduated from Oakwood College degree in biology and education, graduated from American University in management marketing, life, married to Joanne Bruzet with two children, they are members of the Seventh-day Church. Kurt. 2005 through 2008, teacher at, my, at the Miami Academy. 2006 through 2008, elected Florida House and Representative. 2008 through 2010, re-elected by governor. 2010 through 2018, he worked with the Florida Public Services. Vice President of Miami Seven Day Academy, National Association for the Advance of Colored People, National Sciences Teacher Association. Rana Bruze is currently a governor and advancer at Gunner's Law Firm in Florida. He is an accomplished politician and leader with Florida Public Service. Once again, my name is Jeremiah and I'm in the fifth grade. Hi, my name is Caitlin Thompson. My person I'm going to be doing is C.M. Kenny. Charles M. Kinney was born in Richford, Virginia in 1855. 
1878, at the age of 23, Kenya Terry attended a series of evangelistic sermons by J.M. Lebrun. Saturday, September 1878, Kenny kept his first Sabbath. Shortly after his baptism, Charles Kenny start, started working as secretary of the Czech Missionary Society. In 1883, the church members in the California Conference sent him to Tukika, Kansas to work among the blacks. He labored in St. Louis, Missouri, giving Bible studies. He became discouraged because of the racial prejudice. On June 13, 1891, Kenny organized the third black SDA church in Bowdoin Green, Kentucky. June 4, 1892, he organized the fifth black SDA church. Kenny continued his work across several states, from the West to Midwest, and finally to the South. Thanks for listening. Kamara Wilson, and my person I will be doing is Lucy Bryant. When was she born? Lucy Bryant was born on September 22, 1877, and she was married to Charles Lewis. Lucy Brown's career was to be the first Jamaican Seventh-day Adventist church. Lucy grew up in Pattersburg. Fun facts, she was on one of the five women who preferred the work in New York City all her life. She worked under to build up the church. Lucy Brown.
My name is Kevon Johnson and my black history person is Dr. Barry Black. Who was Dr. Barry Black? Dr. Barry Black was born November 1st, 1948. Dr. Barry Black was the 62nd chaplain of the United States. Dr. Barry Black, Barry Black was elected June 27, 2003. Dr. Barry Black was one of the first black African American SDA in office. One of Dr. Barry Black's famous quotes and prayers. Eternal and dependable creator of the universe, we acknowledge you as the giver of every good and perfect gift. You are a solid rock. You arm us with strength. Thank you for the seasons and climates, for sowing and reaping for color and fragrance. Thank you for the time of harvest when our labors and dreams were rewarded. Today, bless, bless our law, lawmakers. Dr. Barry Black's personal life. Dr. Barry Black is a native is a native of Baltimore. Dr. Barry Black went to Oakwood College and many other universities. He was mastering art degrees, counseling, and management. He received a doctorate's degree. Facts about Dr. C. Black. Dr. Barry Black is is married to Brenda Burrell. Dr. Barry Black's middle name is Clayton. Dr. Barry Black is still alive to this day. Here's a picture of Dr. Barry Black at attending a funeral. Thank you for listening. My name is Kaylin Johnson and I'm doing Anna Knight. Anna Knight was born in Gadano, Mississippi on March 4th, 1874 and also died on June 3rd, 1972. Anna Knight was a loved person at Oakwood University for nearly half a century. Anna Knight will rise above her peaceful beginnings to make a massive compact in the Adventist church. Anna Knight read books when she was a little kid. At that time, where she lived were no schools for black. Born into a poor Mississippi black family in 1874, into a family of freed slaves, Anna Knight would rise above her humble beginnings to make a massive impact in the Adventist church, both in America and further afield. At that time, where she lived, there were no schools for blacks, and she wasn't allowed to attend the white schools, but she would volunteer to do chores for her white neighbors if they would let her look at their books. She had a massive appetite for knowledge, and despite this serious disadvantage, she set out to learn. E.E. E. Cleveland by Chloe Reed. E.E. E. Cleveland was born March 11, 1921. E.E. E. Cleveland lived in Huntsville, Alabama. E.E. E. Cleveland was an author. He was known for a civil rights advocate and evangelist and the seventh day of and church.
name is Kyrie Lundgren. My presentation will be on Floyd. William E. Floyd was born in 1818 to Joseph and Elizabeth Floyd in Kennebec County, north of Augusta. Floyd, African American, has religion, vision, and shared them at Miller Wright's gatherings from 1842 through 1845. William Floyd has the first of the seven day visits to receive visions of Christ's second coming at last day event. He was the three he was the first of three people to receive visions during his period, followed by Hazen Ross and Ellen G. White. Floyd, William Floyd. Hi, I'm Michaela Warner and I am doing a project on Lewis Little. Who was she? Lewis Helen Norton Little was born on November 4, 1894. She was born and raised in Grenada and was married to Earl Little on May 10, 1919. They had four kids, Reginald Little, Malcolm X, Filbert X, and Wilfred X. Tragically, she died in 1991. What did she do? Lewis Little served as division secretary. She wrote the reports documenting local UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement ASSN, activities and division meetings for the Negro World newspaper. Fact number one. She was fluent in three languages, English, French, and Grenadian Creole French. Fact number two, she immigrated from Grenada in 1917 to Montreal. Louise Langdon became aware of the work of Marcus Garvey when she was 16 years of age in 1916. She was uh, fluent in French. She was a prolific writer. She was a, a poet. She wrote poetry. She was a prolific in the literary arts. She read profusely, constantly. She was a woman of great integrity and honor. My name is Nala Graves and I'm doing Mary Ellen Britton. Mary Ellen Britton was an educator, social activist, journalist, physician, and ardent believer. Mary was born in Lexington, Kentucky on April 16, 1855. Lexington was the epicenter of the slave trade in Kentucky. Thus, as a black resident of Lexington, Britain and her family would have recognized the thin, sometimes indistinguishable line between bondage and freedom. Her parents, Henry Harrison and Laura Marshall Britton, were free blacks who had 10 children. Mary Britton was the third. She died August 27, 1925 in Lexington, Kentucky. Mary Ellen Britton. Charles E. Bradford, a Seventh-day Adventist powerhouse. Now, who exactly was Charles Edward Bradford? I'll tell you. Charles Edward Bradford was born in Washington, D.C. on July 12, 1925. His parents were Etta and Robert Bradford. He was one of eight children raised by his two God-fearing parents. Following in his parents' footsteps, Charles attended Oakwood College, where he decided to study for the ministry. Whenever he was asked what made him go into the ministry, he would quickly and simply say, Oakwood College. He was later married to his wife, Ethel McKenzie, on May 23, 1948. He had three children and had been married for more than 73 years until his recent passing on September 9, 2021. In 1946, Charles began pastoring for 15 years in churches all over the nation. As a pastor evangelist, he had great success in leading churches and winning souls. Bradford was one of many pastors who made regional conferences not just viable, but exemplary in a time of considerable uncertainty regarding the fate of separate conference plans. At 36 years old, Charles Bradford became the fourth president of Lake Region Conference and maintained his position for nine years. Bradford was a black Adventist leader that seemed to transcend race. As unlikely as that sounds, his rise showed that the quote-unquote blacks are only fit to lead blacks notion was challenged in the church. In one of his latest books, he wrote reflecting on his 70 years of ministry, he states, 
I have a lifelong romance with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Right or wrong, my church, I am a company man. In 1970, Charles E. Bradford was appointed Associate Secretary of General Conference, then becoming not only one of the most black, one of the most ad important black Adventist leaders, but one of the most important Adventist leaders, period. In 1979, he shattered the glass ceiling by being elected the first president of the North American Division, where he served for 11 years, later retiring at a GC session in 1990. He retired as a beloved figure who influenced, mentored, and blessed hundreds of thousands around the world. That is Charles E. Bradford. I'm I'm kidding. I'm I'm Presley. I'm in I'm at E. E. Rogers. I'm Betsy Cruz. I'm at, in first grade and I am E. E. Rogers. I'm Camilla. I'm second grade and I'm E. Rogers. I'm Chloe and I'm in third grade and I'm at E. E. Rogers. My name is Keelan Johnson. I am in fourth grade and I am E. e. Rogers. My name is Caitlin Thompson. I'm in fifth grade and I am E. e. Rogers. Hi, my name is Nala Graves and I am in the seventh grade and I am E. e. Rogers. My name is Michaela Warner. I am in eighth grade and I am E. e. Rogers. Hi, my name is Simon Harden and I'm in eighth grade. I am E.E. E. Rogers. I am Kennedy Bird and my profile is on Dr. E.E. E. Rogers. Dr. E.E. E. Rogers was born in 1916 and died in 2021. Dr. Ernest E.E. E. Rogers peacefully passed away and will have a special place in our hearts. Dr. E.E. E. Rogers graduated from Oakwood Academy in Hudsville, Alabama. He then continued his education earning several higher degrees including theology and biblical languages. He retired from his position as professor of biblical languages at Oakwood, Acad at Oakwood College in 1979. Dr. E. Rogers had a great impact on our lives and we will never forget him and his success in life. Thank you. Peace that I just can't understand It gives me joy, unspeakable joy Peace that I just can't understand It gives me love, unbelievable I am what he says I am He gives me joy, unspeakable joy Peace that I just can't understand It gives me love, unbelievable 
I'm Harmony. And I'm Kennedy. We need your help raising money for our Adventist Robotics Tournament hosted by the Southwest Region. We are the best Seventh-day Adventist school in Mississippi and we need your help to get us to Athens, Texas for a class trip. So please, get out your phones, scan the QR code, and donate today. What, wait, 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 what? You're gonna donate $50? No way. You're gonna give us $150? Hold up. I can't believe you're gonna give us $250. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Oh, and shout out to New Heights SDA Church, my church, for always praying over me and donating to our amazing school, E.E. E. Rogers. Also, shout out to Berin SDA Church for always donating and always helping out when they can. Also, shout out to Pastor Harden for making this video. And shout out to South Jackson and Pastor Mickens for, for, for their support. We are E.E. E. Rogers. What an amazing evening well spent with the scholars of E.E. E. Rogers Seventh-day Adventist School. Thank you for joining us this Saturday evening. We are thankful that our scholars were able to produce this program with the help of each other and of course our engineer, Pastor L. Hardin of the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church. Family, let me tell you, our scholars, they researched they, they, they found pictures, they wrote down their facts, they took their notes, and they were able to compile that to what you have seen here this evening. And to God be the glory, um, we're just excited, excited that they were able to share this with you. Real quick, type in the chat, who did you learn something new about? Which Adventist pioneer did you learn new things about? All right, good, good, good. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, quickly, two announcements. Uh, you heard it here first, our sixth through eighth grade class. They will be traveling in a few weeks to Athens, Texas to take part in the North American Division Robotics Tournament. This is the first time that we are going west with our scholars and we are excited. If you haven't already donated something or sent something to the school, be sure to scan that QR code and you can make your tax-free deductible donation for this cause. And last but not least, enrollment opens up on March 1st. You heard it, March 1st for new scholars. There is an incentive for our families who recommend a new family to us. So the portal opens, www.eerogersacademy.com. Check us out, spread the word. God is doing great things at the best Seventh-day Adventist school in the state of Mississippi. God bless.